Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Joanna Ho. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. The minimum wage rises to $40 an hour in May, but critics denounce the increase as too tiny. Mainland travel quota sufficient for now, says John Lee, but he'll review the situation later. And Beijing suspends short-term visas for South Korean and Japanese travelers in reaction to curbs on mainlanders. The minimum wage is to go up by $2.50 an hour from May 1st, after being frozen for four years. But activists say the new hourly rate of $40 is inadequate. Macy Mok reports. The Executive Council has approved a recommendation to increase the minimum wage by $2.50 an hour from May the 1st, Labor Day. That will raise the hourly earnings of the city's lowest paid workers to $40 from the current $37.50. The Minimum Wage Commission expects the raise to benefit between 46,000 and 87,000 workers, mainly cleaners, security guards and those in the delivery and retail sectors. Activists had campaigned for a bigger increase. But the commission projected that if the minimum wage is increased to $44, the unemployment rate could rise by up to half a percentage point and throw as many as 20,000 people out of work. Of course, we, we, we welcome the increase of a minimum wage, but the amount is too small. Huh? Um, because if, even we compare to the uh, purchasing power and the uh, uh, deducted inflation, uh, we found actually the uh, real um, wage is even lower than 10 years ago. Uh, and also the purchasing power is uh, less than before. Labor sector lawmaker Kwok Wai Kern said the government was being unfair as the minimum wage has been frozen for four years. He said only 1.8 percent of the labor force will benefit. Kwok said the minimum wage should be reviewed every year instead of two. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. The current quota for mainland travel is sufficient, according to the chief executive, but he pledged to review whether there's a need to make adjustments later. Chief Executive John Lee said 30 to 40 percent of the quota for travel to the mainland in the next two to three days are still vacant. But not many slots were left for days near the Lunar New Year, especially next Friday, which is over 90 percent booked. Lee insists that the 50,000 daily limit via land checkpoints fulfills the actual demand, as only 17 percent of the slots for the first eight weeks were filled. He urged the public to stay tuned when asked whether the government had overestimated the economic benefits of the border reopening. That's because the number of people arriving in Hong Kong from the mainland has been much lower than those heading north so far. I think the economic benefits will come uh, positively. It is the beginning of uh, the new uh, reopening of the boundary. Then, of course, uh, people need to make plans uh, to satisfy uh, uh, their own requirements. We are not looking at just one or two single days. We are obviously looking at uh, the reopening of the boundary crossing in the long run. And obviously this has been uh, the desire and the wants of a lot of people, uh, not just to satisfy family reunion, but to ensure that the normal business, uh, the normal activities can go about. Lee said the government is planning a large-scale promotional exercise starting next month to boost tourism and businesses in Hong Kong. He was also asked whether the government would follow Macau and declare COVID as an endemic disease and consider lifting restrictions such as the isolation order for positive patients. Lee responded that the World Health Organization hasn't changed its classification of COVID. He said the lifting of the remaining restrictions will depend on pandemic data. 
the head of a pharmacist group has come out against any move to introduce a law to limit the sales of medicines. Suggestions of a law arose when some types of medication went out of stock because of panic buying. Macy Mock reports. Many pharmacies ran out of popular brands of paracetamol recently. But Chief Executive John Lee reassured the public that there's a stable supply of fever medication and painkillers. The government is discussing with pharmaceutical companies a self-regulatory limit on purchases of certain types of medication. But Lee said if necessary, a new law could be introduced. Some pharmacies are already capping the amount of medicines a person can buy at a time. The Hong Kong General Chamber of Pharmacy has urged its members not to sell a large amount to a single customer. Chamber Vice Chairman Jen Tuck Wing said selling one or two boxes of fever tablets per transaction is about right. But he opposes a law restricting sales, saying it will be hard to live after it's enforced. Jen pointed to milk formula as an example noting that although the city now has a stable supply, travelers are still barred from taking more than two tins across the border. The restriction was introduced in 2013 to combat parallel trading. Jen said panic buying of medicines has subsided. He added that a 20 percent rise in business that pharmacies were hoping with the border reopening has not materialized. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Hong Kong's daily COVID caseload has dropped below 10,000 for the first time in more than a month. Of the 9,379 new infections recorded today, 227 were imported. 75 more people died from the virus. Government pandemic adviser Ivan Ho, meanwhile, estimated that about 5 million people in the city have been infected at least once, and a hybrid immunity has been built in a community. He told a radio show that the government should cancel the isolation order for positive patients so that they can go to work if they are in good health condition and have no fever. Starting on Friday, Hong Kongers traveling to Macau will be given a free return ticket if they spend at least one night in the casino hub. The offer is aimed at reviving the city's tourism sector. Anyone buying a ticket to go to Macau on the turbojet or Koh Tai water jet or by bus on the Hong Kong Macau Express will be eligible. The offer lasts until the end of March. Other public transport operators are expected to join the promotional campaign, according to Macau authorities. Visitors from Hong Kong are not required to show a negative COVID test result. China has suspended issuing short-term visas to South Korean and Japanese visitors. The move is seen as retaliation against Seoul and Tokyo for imposing restrictions on Chinese travelers. Jenna Slow reports. COVID infections have surged on the mainland after it dismantled most restrictions and downgraded the disease. This prompted some countries to impose stricter measures for travelers from China, apart from proof of a negative PCR test. South Korea also announced that until the end of February, visitors from Hong Kong and Macau can only fly in through Incheon International Airport in Seoul and cannot take domestic flights. A South Korean foreign ministry spokesman defended its move, saying Seoul based its actions on scientific and objective grounds. In response, Beijing has decided to hold short-term visas for South Korean citizens temporarily. Hong Kong described Seoul's restrictions as disappointing. Japan's Kyoto News Agency, citing travel industry sources, said China has also suspended issuing visas to Japanese travelers. A senior Chinese diplomat criticized foreign countries for targeting Beijing, saying their measures were not proportionate or constructive. It's the right of each and every country to make their own responses to COVID-19, but these measures should be science-based and should be proportionate. And entry restrictions, if they are targeting China, they are unnecessary. 
Xiao added that restrictions should not be discriminatory or affect normal travel. Janice Lo, HKIBC. Overseas, Brazil's President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva has vowed to punish those responsible for the storming of government buildings in the capital over the weekend. His pledge came as people across the country took to the streets to denounce the riots in Brasilia. In Brazil's largest city of Sao Paulo, tens of thousands of protesters demanded the jailing of former President Jair Bolsonaro. The right-wing leader, who is in the United States for medical treatment, refused to concede defeat in October's election. His supporters went on the rampage in the presidential palace, Congress and the Supreme Court. Security forces have begun dismantling camps set up by Bolsonaro loyalists. About 1,500 were arrested following the unrest. U.S. President Joe Biden has declared a state of emergency in California, where a record rainfall and hurricane-force winds left thousands of people without power. Alameda County near San Francisco was hit by landslides, along with thunderstorms and strong winds. Emergency crews tried to restore electricity after falling trees damaged power lines. Residents of the upscale neighborhood of Montecito were urged to evacuate when heavy rain sent water gushing down the hillsides. A cleanup was organized in the state's capital, Sacramento, where uprooted trees damaged homes. Winds of around 100 kilometers per hour battered the city. Hong Kong stocks edged lower today as traders cashed in on the New Year rally. The Hang Seng Index finished down 0.3 percent on a tepid response to the border reopening, despite strong market sentiment. Giliotto gained 6 percent after posting a substantial rise in vehicle sales for 2022. Lee Auto was up 6.7 percent as mainland motorists switched to cheaper homegrown electric vehicle brands. Ping'an Insurance Group lost 3 percent after its ranking among the world's top 25 insurers slid to fifth from second. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index closed down 56 points. To the top 10 active stocks, Alibaba was down 90 cents, Tencent up 40 cents. BYD Company up $5.80, Ping'an down $1.80. To the forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, euros at 8.37, pounds at 9.48, and Australian dollar at 5.36. Over to the UK market, FTSE 100 is down 13 points. China says it met its new urban job target last year, despite COVID. The Ministry of Human Resources said the pandemic affected economic activity, but 12.06 million jobs were created, compared with nearly 12.7 million in 2021. This year, almost 11.6 million university graduates are expected to look for jobs. The ministry expects the labor market to remain stable and is increasing support for the services sector, which is predicted to attract many job seekers. Tasting at the International Wine and Spirits Fair in an in-person format has been allowed for the first time in three years since the pandemic began. But the two-day event at the Convention and Exhibition Centre is open only to members of the industry. The Hong Kong Trade Development Council said about 600 buyers, including 30 from overseas, had registered to attend. Over 100 exhibitors from around the world will be displaying alcoholic beverages. This man hopes the wine-tasting sessions can help drive up business by 10 to 20 percent. But because of COVID curbs, wine tasting can only take place in front of booths. 
On to the weather now. Cloudy with a few light rain patches tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 17 and 19 degrees. Expect fog as we head into the weekend. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Tuesday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Joanna Ho. Thanks for watching. Good night.